Welcome to a Song of Ice and Fire Symposium. My name is Nav and my pronouns are they, them. And my name's Harmit and my pronouns are Hershey, like the chocolate. And this is A Feast for Crows, chapters 27 and 28. In these chapters, Jamie is chillin' with Sir Illin. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, everyone. So, Harmith, did anyone die in these chapters? Um, no. I think you might be right. <laughs> I don't, yeah, no, I don't think so. All right, then. What did you think of these chapters? I enjoyed them. I did like Jamie's more than Cersei's. However, they were both good. They were fun. Um, I loved the constant thinking about Brienne. That was fun. I loved Jamie, like, kind of training it up. That was cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, so then, will you summarize these chapters for us? I will try. Oh, my God. Brain is so foggy that I don't know how this is going to go. All right. Three, two... One, go. Okay, Cersei's telling Jamie that he has to go deal with, like, River Run, Heron Hall, all the things. He's like, I don't want to do it. And he's having all these feelings, but he doesn't like it. And then he's having all this rage. And then they're leaving, and he's requested Marbrand and Illyn with him. Um, and then they get to Heron Hall, and he's like, okay. Hey, this pious guy is going to be in charge. He kind of gets those updates that we've had for a while. Um, Switch. Uh, Cersei. Uh, Cersei is... She's getting carried to the top of the hill to go talk to the new High Septon guy. Um, and she... And like all the sparrows are there and they're kind of blocking her way and she kind of talks to them and they're basically just super mad and Tommen hasn't been like blessed yet so then when she finally talks to the Septon who she doesn't approve of she's like hey um what's it gonna take That's like what are we doing oh <laughs> damn it mm -hmm. all right well I why tried. don't we get started on the chapters let's do it Okay. Get us started. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So Jamie is talking to Cersei. Um, and she's like, oh my god, you look like Robert. You suck. Uh, you're not as cool as you once... You're a ghost of what you once were. And that's basically her whole thing in this conversation. And his whole thing is, like, he still is obviously, like, in love with her or whatever. So he's, like, constantly is, like, fantasizing about still being with her. But then he he's, like, every time I see her, like, I get angry. And then he's, like, lashing out. But what they're talking about is... No, every um, time he thinks about having sex with her, he's reminded of she's been fucking Lancel and Osmond Kettleblack and Moonboy, yeah. for all I know. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and so she basically has given him this task of, um, like, going out into the world with some people and um, getting River Run for her. She's like, okay, Brendan Tully better be chained or dead, um, and you need to figure out what's going on with Heron Hall, and we and you need to bring Willis Manderley because um, of like they've done the task the manderleys have done the task that she set out for them so she's like okay hey, we need him now hopefully he's still there um but jamie's like okay davin is that his name devin the guy devin okay yeah devin is your warden of the west like why is why does he have that job if you can't even trust him to do it i promised catlin that i wouldn't take up arms against the starks or tullys and now you're literally making me do it. Um, like, Tommen, I should be here defending Tommen. Like, this is a bad idea. And, uh, but she's like, no, 
like you're she still just a wants Lannister. to get rid of him so yeah and she's like you're still a Lannister go bye um and she's like Osmond is gonna command the king's guard while you're gone and which also pisses Jamie off and he's like mm, no Loris is gonna do it um and then he's like so she's obvious she doesn't like Loris right so she's upset about that mm-hmm. but then he says like if you hadn't sent Balon Swan to Dorne when did she do that um I'm trying to remember how much we've heard about this exactly okay cuz but somebody had to take Gregor's head to Dorne so he's the guy doing it i'm just going to like i think oh, we heard okay. about this so i'm just going to tell you okay okay got it one second i'm going to write that down okay that makes sense cuz i was like i swear it's eris like he's doing something else okay but why send your king's guard to do that? Well, what does she say? Uh oh, I oh wait. <laughs> right. Yes, <laughs> forgot about this. Yeah, she basically is like, I don't trust him. Uh yeah, he's over there and he's on our side, so that's good. Um and then Jamie's getting mad about like the whole Osmond stuff. Um and okay, there was a weird moment where he like he's like wow like Loris isn't out here lusting over you but that doesn't mean he's like incapable like he's trying to like throw it in her face but she so she hits him and then he Mm -hmm. has this thought he's like you hardly I hardly think and then she stops him and it's like think about this (laughs) yeah and he's thinking and he's thinking and he's like he wanted to rip her gown off and turn her blows to kisses. He'd done it before, back when he had two good hands. That I mean, like for a lot of people, like the you know, the, this like kind of pain and sex go together. I know, but like in their case, I'm just like it. Just every time. Either of them has a thought about their relationship. I'm just like, are you okay? <laughs> like, either direct... Because, like, with them, I'm just never... I'm just never sure that it's a good thing. It's um, rare. I... Yeah. I mean, come on. They're twins having sex. How can it be a good thing? But... Yeah, I know. But I just was like, okay, eek. I don't their like whole this. relationship um, is fucked up. Because they both... Ha- like, it's like... The power dynamics are weird because, like, he's physically stronger than her, but she is currently in command of the kingdoms, and also he's lost his hand, which, like, to her now means that he's just worthless. Like, I don't know. Not a relationship I want to be a part of. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Yeah, but as they're... Yeah, so she bas- basically. Is there anyone like, who actually ships Jamie and Cersei? Yeah, I want to know. Let, no let one, me know, because I, no I, I don't like I. I know, like, like what would their ship name even? I don't think I've even heard it. So I maybe it's not a thing at all. Samey, I mean Jersey. <laughs> Samey. <laughs> That is that works on so many levels, but I exactly. hate it. <laughs> oh my god. Um that's so silly. What the heck? Um Yeah, but he kinda she basically is like, get the fuck out, you're doing this. And he reflects instantly and he's like, Ooh, I shouldn't have he's like, if I really wanted her to listen to me, I shouldn't have made her angry. Like I knew that wasn't gonna work, but I just I'm just mad at her all the time nowadays. Um, And he lets us know that, and he's kind of like, well, maybe I'm glad to be leaving. And he's thinking, and he's thinking about how he doesn't like anyone on the small council and how people in Flea Bottom call them the smallest council. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm like, what the heck? Um, And yeah, he's just thinking about like, he's like, yeah, I don't like Kyburn. And I tried to warn Cersei, but she wouldn't listen. Um, and then he leaves the red he uh leaves the red keep and he finds forty knights and esquires. 
Um, yeah, he's being sent to River Run. Did, did you say that specifically? Yeah, I just I think I just said all the plans. Like he has to oh, deal okay. with River Run, he has to deal with Heron Hall, all the things. Um, yeah, so all these people are waiting for him because they're about to go, basically. Which, okay, so was it, I guess this doesn't really matter, but I'm going to say it anyway because I'm thinking about it. So Cersei was like, so Cersei made all the plans and then they were, and then she was like, call Jamie in and told him, but everything well, was already Well, no, I think Jamie anyway. prob- like, he probably knew beforehand, but I don't know why they didn't talk about this other than, like, right before he's leaving. Maybe she- right didn't make herself available for an audience before this probably okay that makes sense um yeah but then he basically instantly has to leave and he's thinking in he's like okay who are who are the men with me um and a few of them are people sworn to house lannister yeah then and there's a few and that it's clear he knew because he like chose the people he wants to go with him so yeah that too it was like Okay, so is th- was this just his like last? Maybe this effort? was his last. Like he did talk about it before, but this was his last ditch effort to like yeah. try one last time. You know, probably that's that's very Jamie Jamie in character. But yeah, so he's got House Lannister people, and then he's got some people who like just became part of the House Lannister allegiance. Um, and then he names a few names, but the only one that matters to me is Red Ron at Connington. And we've talked about him so much recently that when he mentioned him, I was like, oh my God, does this mean like Brienne, like we're going to see Brienne soon? Like that's why he's included like narratively, but that wasn't quite how that went, but we'll get to that. Um, Yeah. So he's just thinking to who's included and he's thinking about his horses and like people are naming his horses, but he's like, I've never thought about naming my horses because they die anyway. Yeah, um, his he's squires, got a few squires. Have his horses, honor and glory. Honor for when he wears his Kingsguard armor, and glory for when he wears his Lannister armor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. interest. Very interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, like smaller stuff happens, and then he kind of just thinks back to like how his part of the the only part of the deal he was able to negotiate is that he's going to get Sir Illyn to go with him and Sir Adam Marbrand to go with him. Um, and he's like, she probably agreed to that without, um, without really like, uh, what's it called? Without like channel about it. Yeah, exactly. Cause she doesn't like him anyway. <laughs> like, um, but the reason he chose them is cause Adam was his, his friend back in the day. Um, and then he knows that Ellen Payne, um, the o- like, he's probably loyal to Tywin because that was... Yeah, he lost his tongue for Tywin, so he's yeah. one of the most loyal Lannister people. And also, because he lost his tongue, he can't... Like, his loyalty is kind of guaranteed in that he can't spill your secrets, so... Yeah. And so, I mean, you're probably getting to this, but let's just yeah. skip straight to, like, when he went to go ask Sir Ellen Payne yeah. to join him and how yeah. this man is living in straight-up filth. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, clearly he seems to, like, be an alcoholic and... Yeah. Like, the only thing he takes care of is his sword and everything else is just gross. And Jamie's like, well, if you can bear to leave all of this, I would love to have you on the road <laughs> with me. Um, oh, my God. Why, why do you think he's, like, living I, like this? I don't know. Like, I... I don't know. I mean, like, we know that he's just kind of on his own, right? Like, we know that he doesn't really have, like... Because we talked about how, like, Pod was his closest descendant, right? Not descendant, but, like... Like, family member. Like, right? But, like, that's literally his closest. So, clearly, he doesn't have, like, family or, like, you know, friends sort of thing. Either servants won't... Like, I, I don't won't clean up after him or he refuses to let them clean up after him yeah yeah i I, yeah that like i think he isolates himself for sure because there's not really anyone but i also think like i don't think like like you said like well people like people are afraid of him right so i'm sure that contributes um yeah, but if but you also didn't stink all the time of poop, maybe they would be a little less afraid of you, you know? Yeah, I think it's probably like a two-way street of like they don't want to do it and 
like he doesn't really care about them doing it or he, like you know I don't, I don't know what's going on in his head you know but like it really just seems like he really doesn't have really any direction or like specific aim like he just kind of is there until his next execution or something you know right like um, yeah maybe this adventure will give some meaning to his life and he can yeah. be redeemed or i don't know <laughs> yeah because it's like he can't talk right and then he also can't like read or write he also doesn't have friends or yeah. family and also, it's just why like can't he read or write like he is from a noble house why did they never teach him that yeah i don't know but that's know. weird to me but i guess he i don't know maybe he just wasn't very studious <laughs> yeah maybe um yeah but he just kind of right before that he just kind of outlines like the total amount of people he has going with him is like less than a thousand um, and he's like, that's fine. We don't need people at River Run. We Wait. already have people who aren't staying alive. Is it even alive. anywhere close to a thousand? He says specifically, not a great host, all in all, fewer than a thousand men in total. Oh, So I okay. think it I is, I like, that. sort of close. I um, think I was just, like, counting just the number of knights and stuff instead of right. all the All the holy people, people and... Yeah, because then he's also going to drop, like, the Holy 100 off, right? So then right. by the time he gets to River Run, there's probably the less. The Holy 86. <laughs> yeah. They got 86 the- <laughs> That's a thing, right? To get 86 I, I don't know what that skill. means, no. Was George R. R. Martin referencing something when he said that? <laughs> no, hang on. Now I have to Google okay. this. Maybe I'm... No, go for it. Yeah, it's like 86 is like a slang for when usually for foods and drinks, it's used to indicate that an item is no longer available or that a customer should be ejected. Like, oh. like let's 86 that off the menu. Like, let's get rid of it. Or like oh, that. Wait, this- okay. I think I have heard of that. I just right? didn't. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. I I guess I just forgot or didn't real or I think I have heard of that. I think I just forgot that that was an eighty. I, I was yeah. like, maybe I'm thinking of a different number. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's like eighty three actually. Eighty three? Um, no, no, that doesn't sound right. Eighty six sounds right. I don't know where it comes <laughs> from, but anyway. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, but then the one other thing before the before he recalls going to Ellen, um, is just. Uh, He's thinking back to when, like, Mace Tyrell had come through for Joffrey's wedding and everything, and how everybody had lined up. There was this whole procession. And oh, everything. not even for Joffrey's then, wedding. Like, when Mace Tyrell recently rode off to win back Storms. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Everybody was oh, cheering for him. Oh, marched out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now Jamie is out to on a similar mission, but everybody's just staring at him like, what? <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, and he just kind of notes, he's like, yeah. they like the smell of roses, but have no love of lions. And that's pretty consistent in both of these chapters, and we with what we know is going on, I mean, you know? the roses have a much better PR campaign, just FYI. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, There's, um, he's also got his new golden hand. Mm-hmm, yeah. Which somebody's like, wave it at them, and he's like, no, absolutely not. I will not be waving my golden hand at the starving people in the Please. streets. Thank you very much. <laughs> Please. Oh, my God. Uh, so then... they're just on their way. Let's skip ahead to them going down the road. And obviously, he. this is like him doing his reverse journey, like, from King's Landing, oh, yeah. like, you know, River Run, King's Landing, King's Landing, River Run. Oh my god! So these people really just cross the same paths over and over. Yeah, he's uh, what does it say about his like spiritual journey? I wonder. <laughs> um, just going back because on the way from River Run to King's Landing is where we fell in love with Jamie. So are we gonna mm. fall out of love with Jamie because of his actions, or are we gonna fall that's further in love with so Jamie? Inter- that's actually so interesting. Oh my god, 
Um, wow. But yeah. Huh. He's noticing all the, you know, devastation caused by the war. Yeah. I mean, at this point, it's just so, like, background. Like, it's exactly. it's so <laughs> pedestrian. It's, it's yeah. like, oh, everything is burned down? Oh, that's just every day. This is just a Tuesday. <laughs> Moving on. Real. Yeah. But, like, as they're first traveling, he's like, okay, we still got some things here that haven't been completely ruined. So I'm going to stop my people from i'm gonna tell my people to stay in the column unless i let them yeah but he's like i can see that it's gonna get worse and then later in the chapter as they keep going it does get worse Uh, yeah yeah so he's gonna stay with oh get what it which castle is it that they camp lady hayforth at the castle of the hayfords oh this is the little baby lady (laughs) who got married to (laughs) the La- Tyric. It, Tyric Lannister, who then went missing at the riots. Yeah. And they still haven't heard anything. They never found it, his body. They never got any ransom things. And Jamie's thinking about, like, I wonder what's going on with that. And he's reflecting on the fact that v- Varys never warned anybody about a riot brewing. Mm-hmm. And what his intentions may be, which I'm like, yeah, where is that guy? Yeah. Where's Tyrion? I don't know, bro. <laughs> I'm just waiting for next chapter to be Tyrion, and then the next one is Varys. <laughs> uh, back to back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's how these books go. We get no content from characters for a while, and then they pop in, and we get, like, all the details. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's he's thinking about that. Um, and he's like, yeah, he didn't come to see Marcella off either. Um, yeah. And, uh, da, 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 da. oh, okay. So then he goes up to Ellen and he's like, it's time. So clearly they've discussed this and they're going to fight. Um, like, cause he's trying to train mm-hmm. to get better. Um, and he puts on his golden hand, but he realizes that like, it can't really gra- grasp. Oh, sorry. Things. One, one more thing. Yeah. Um, when he's thinking about Varys, he also thinks that it would have been a simple matter for Varys to arrange for Tyrek to be snatched during the confusion. So mm-hmm. he, why would Varys snatch Tyrek? And what do you think happened to this guy? Did somebody else snatch him? What are they intending to do with him? I don't know. I guess are they just like, waiting until all the Lannisters kill each other and then they could be like, "Here's the last remaining Lannister." Here's the so heir. I guess he's king. Oh my god! Please, <laughs> no. I think this makes sense to me because even Jaime says in this thought about Varys and Tyrek, he says like Tyrek was also Robert Squire, so uh-huh. I think he's implying that he might know about like the Robert the- poisoning, the fight with the bear. So I think it's kind of like. We know that Varys keeps, Varys doesn't gamble. He keeps, like, he keeps his money in, in like, all the baskets. You know what I mean? And I'm using money for, like, I know it's eggs, but I, money gamble, feels more fitting. He doesn't gamble, but he keeps his money in all the baskets. Like, okay, that was an <laughs> insane way to say that. It made sense in my head, not out loud. Like, Um, either he doesn't gamble and doesn't put his, like, he just hoards his money, or... I was trying, I know what you're saying, but it made sense in my head, okay? Because it's like, he's not gonna gamble. Too bad we're not all in your head. Okay, okay, okay. I guess what I'm saying is he doesn't gamble, but he does make investments. And he does, like, he's got a diversified portfolio. Exactly. He doesn't, he's not out here gambling with like one stock, but he is also not hoarding his money in his savings account. Like he is making investments. So I think knowing that about Varys, it makes sense to me that, because we know that he's done things in the past where we were like, oh, so he's on the side of the Lannisters. And then he did a few things where we were like, does he want Danny back in charge? Is he just keeping the Lannisters here until he can get the real dragon back? And this to me is kind of like getting Tyrek snatched and like giving him a life outside of here. Like he can always use him as a chip against the Lannisters if he needs to later on, you know? So it makes sense that if we get someone who knows everything snatched up, then we can go back. 
you know? Okay. Um, cool. Moving on. Practicing with Sir Illin. Yeah. Uh, it's going real bad. Like, at first, Illin's kind of going easy on him, and they're kind of on equal footing, but then eventually Illin starts trying, and, like, Jamie is getting bruised and battered as he says yeah and he's like um, that was good we're gonna keep doing it until i'm <laughs> as good with my left hand as i ever was with my right and ellen it's ellen just laughs at his face yeah which um ouch <laughs> yeah and i understand this like obviously we know jamie is very jamie is a very action driven like I'm mad. I want to just get a sword and start doing shit person. This makes sense to me that he's very like, I'm just going to work out. I'm going to do this. And like, he's getting all his stuff out this way. However, the one thing about this is as this goes, cause he, he kind of continues to do this every night, wherever they stop. Like he finds some mm-hmm. like empty, sh- not shed, but like stables or somewhere to do this with Ellen. The problem is, is like, nobody's mentioning it. But he knows and we know that they can probably sort of assume what's going on. Because before it was kind of that thing of someone would Well, be like, everybody can tell they're practicing. But he doesn't think that everybody knows just how bad he is. But with the bruises and stuff, like, you can well, assume even if you're good, he's... you'll get bruises. But maybe well, not like, as many bruises. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if I'm coming back and every single night, my I'm question worse is, and worse, do they think they're having sex? Because I was like, that would be a much oh, fun, much more fun of a story to tell. You know, that would be fun. Maybe he should just have that as his like um, alias sort of idea of like this is actually what's going on. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, he has been hanging out with Loris, and we all know that hanging out with a gay person makes you gay. <laughs> so like obviously he's gay now literally um yeah because he could definitely use that as his story but i also think like the fact that he's coming back and he's getting more and more bruises every time and ellen probably isn't i like i don't think it would be hard to understand what's going on and to me it just kind of feels like a matter of time before somebody is like well, challenges his authority maybe yeah because the thing is people are already losing love for lannisters and people are losing yeah. the fear they have for jamie and i understand and i think right now all the people that are with him it's good for them to stay with him right and like not challenge that him. i agree but it i also think that it's like never really about fully about the fighting prowess of your leader because there's a bunch of leaders like Tywin didn't even fight he literally yeah. stayed at the back of the like any battle yeah, yeah, yeah. and just supervised yeah, yeah, yeah. we never heard so, about him in attorney anywhere doing anything. yeah so like while personally it may hurt his reputation overall as like a threat to his authority, I'm not a hundred percent sure how much of an effect right. it would have. Like with really. his people, I I think I understand what you're saying, but I feel like that makes sense to me with Tywin, right? Because that's who he is. But with Jamie, it's like people aren't usually like, like okay, people are like, a he's a Lannister. Don't want to mess with that. But when it comes to him specifically, his fighting prowess is just, like, it precedes his reputation as a Lannister. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's still, like, it might not, it might not turn his own men against him or something. But, like, people encountering him on the road or, like, whispers, like, I feel like his overall reputation and, like, how safe he is would be impacted. Because okay. people who people who normally would be like, sure, I hate him and he's a Lannister, but... At least he can fight. But he can, like, freaking chop me up. But I feel like in this, it's like, if I already hate him and I encounter him and I've heard that he can't fight anymore, like, right? And, like, some of the people with him aren't necessarily royals, right? And, like, even the royals, I mean, are, like common people he has with him and the royals nobility like, even you call everybody yes, royal sorry yeah the nobility <laughs> the nobility and just the common people that he has with him even if they're on his side doesn't mean they're not going to gossip and talk right 
Because yeah. they're not going to be like, oh, if I gossip, someone's going to be challenged against my leader. Like, that's just what okay, you do Okay, so what do you expect some somebody who is not on his side to come up against him and then be feel free to defy him further because he can't fight? Yes. Um, and I think also if somebody who's not on his side comes and challenges and it looks like they're going to win... I think the people on his side could, some of them could switch. Mm. And also now, okay. now with Connington, like if Conning, like after the end of this chapter, if Connington is like mad at him, like I don't think his own men being mad at him helps either. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I, it's just, it's just little worries that I have as somebody who cares about Jamie's well-being. Okay. Um, All right. But yeah, Stay hopefully worried. that doesn't, <laughs> hopefully so. that doesn't come up. But yeah, they're doing the fighting, um, and as as they kind of as they kind of go on, this is when like the the signs of war get like super obvious. Like the roads get worse. There's less and less like vegetation or anything, um, and we hear about the wolves who ruled the weary world from dusk till dawn, um, yeah. and so we're getting closer and closer to the wolves. And they run into um, a guy named Sir Roger Hogg. And he basically just kind of tells them, like, yeah, Amory Lorch came over and, like, slaughtered all my sheep and tried to kill me. Even though I told him I was sworn to, sworn to your people, like Lazy Lady Irma Sant. Like, I was, I'm sworn to her and yeah. I told him. But he didn't care. And then the wolves came and they killed the, like, they ate, ate the rest of my sheep and, like, they didn't care. Like, what do I do? And it was like this really sad moment. And Jamie's just like, just plant and pray for one last har harvest. And it's like, it just was really sad. And I was like, yeah, like these people who are literally so loyal to you. And like, you know, it's like that moment mm -hmm. of like when you're up face to face. There are no winners in this war. Literally. It's like that moment when you're face to face with a politician and, like, you actually get to ask them, like, your questions and your concerns. And, like, you're, li you're like, pleading. You're, like, this is literally, we are on the front lines. This is happening. And they're just, like, sorry. Best I can do. This was literally one of those moments. Like, imagine, like, how few people get to talk to someone as high up as Jamie. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, literally uncle slash father, but they don't know that, <laughs> to the king. And, like, this is the only answer he can give them. And it, it just, it just, it just really feels like spitting in their faces. Like, I don't like it. But, yeah. Anyway. I don't like it. But at this point, now they're finally about to cross over from the land that, like, everyone who's on King's Landing side to the people who are sworn to River Run. Mm -hmm. um, and then, Kate, there was this moment that I didn't like. So they're kind of, they're on their way to Heron Hall at this point, right? And um, he sees some outlaws who, like, take in shelter. Yeah. And he just kills them for no reason and yeah, says so it they're... felt good this was justice. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm not missing any details, right? Like, that is what no. happened. So these are, like, as... Septon Maribald would call them broken men. Mm -hmm. And they come from all armies, including Lannister armies. But he's like, yeah. well, y'all abandoned it. So you die. And here I am, Jamie the Just. Like, <laughs> yeah. No. <clears throat> yeah. No. Like, absolutely not. Like, yeah, that was really gross. Um, it's. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm too headached to think about this right now. Yeah, because I think it's just the thing of like, because we talk about it later in the chapter where he's talking to the sep, the like the Septon guy, right? That he's leaving in charge, the guy with the eighty sixes. Um, yeah, he's talking to that guy. And the guy kind of says, and he is like, what do we do if we see this person? What do we do if this person comes knocking at the door? What do we do if this person? And yeah. Jamie's kind of like, well, kill this person. Keep this person so I can kill them. Like, that's that's sort of his approach. But right. the Septon's approach is very, like, he, he has this moment where he says, like, 
if someone commits a crime, we have to punish them. But if somebody sins, we have to give them a chance to forgive. No, but he says, I'll let them repent for their sins and then I'll kill them for their crime. So even he's not like there's this whole yeah. like thing of like forgive like in both of these chapters like yeah forgive and forget and whatever but and then still do what you wanted in the first yeah. place anyway it's just semantics honestly like, as like a representative of the crown i don't really have like you know recognizing that the crown is fucked up and not we're not on its side as readers, <laughs> but as Jamie, who is on the crown side, I can understand him executing those people that fled, you know, just a upon... but the part where he's like, look at me, I'm now Jamie the just, maybe that's yeah. him making f- like recognizing that, you know, he's like, right. it, it's he, he's not saying that like genuinely, but ironically, like, mm. I'm so right. just now. Look at me killing people for fleeing the war. Like, <laughs> Right. I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah, because I guess it is also like, I mean, the first chapter. I don't chapter... think he seriously thinks of himself as Jamie the Just, you know? Yeah. I think he's maybe lampshading is. Is that the right term to use here? But you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah, because I'm thinking even... Literally, chapter one of um, uh, A Game of Thrones. I was struggling to remember the name of the book. Um, Chapter one was literally Ned killing a man for fleeing the Night's Watch. Mm -hmm. For, like, probably the most valid reason he could have had, right? For fleeing. Right. Like, you know, like, sure, he was supposed to, you know, whatever, but then he ran away. And so I guess and Ned it's also like, didn't know the reason. Yeah, that's true. Um, no, but then he tried to tell him, right? But then Ned was like, "But you fled anyway." No. But the guy didn't the guy try to tell him? Wasn't no, like- the guy little guy never said anything. Ned was just like, from how scared he was, I can tell that shit's brewing in the north, like. Oh, was he just, like, in shock? That's why he didn't say anything? Yeah, I don't know if he, like, literally didn't say anything, or but he definitely didn't say anything about White Walkers or the others mm. or anything like that. Okay, okay, I see. But, like, it's kind of that same situation, right? Where it's, like... Like, I, I get that he had to do that, and I get what you're saying. Like, may, maybe as a representative of the Crown, like, Jamie had to do this... But it just what I'm saying is I that he like recognizes it. that it's fucked up that he's doing this. Yeah. And that's why him. he's calling himself ironically Jamie the Just. Yeah. I guess I don't like it, but I understand, I think. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Mhm. Um, so have they gotten to Heron Hall by this time? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so um, they get to Harrenhal, and uh, Adam. Oh, he, 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 sorry, on the yeah. way, he's also thinking, like, maybe I should ask any, if I encounter somebody, maybe I should ask them if they've seen a pretty maid with auburn hair or a big, ugly one mm. with a face that would curdle <laughs> milk. Which, seriously, Jamie, like, the fact that this is his, like, inner monologue, and then he's, like, later defending her honor. And it's just, like, all sorts of fucked upness, but. I'll allow it. You know what? <laughs> Pick a lane, Jamie. But the the him like being like is a pretty maid with auburn hair. That's like basically Brienne's line. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. She just goes. She just goes around saying that. Um, yeah. So they get to Heron Hall, and the gates are closed. Yeah, and, the gates uh, are closed. They pull up and then they ring their, not ring, like they pull <laughs> their horns or whatever, <laughs> ring their triangles. Yeah. Um, and finally the door is open and they go through and it's all of Gregor's remaining people. Not very many and not in very good shape. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows who's in command because everybody who was in command died. One of them was like Polliver, killed by... 
Arya. Nobody knows yeah. exactly. But they do tell him the tale of the hound killing him in the inn and how the hound had a little boy with him. But, you know. <laughs> hound had a little boy. That made me laugh. Yeah. And there's this one guy who is very foul mouth. And what does shit mouth he's literally called? Shit mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. At one point, the guy's like, oh. Bugger me with a bloody spear. And Jamie's like, let me oblige you. And then he's like, what? No, no, no. I don't mean that. <laughs> he's like, that's just how I talk. Yeah. So they finally are like, okay, nobody's in charge here. Let's, that's great. Lovely. So they get settled into Heron Hall. And the first thing Jamie wants is for Vargo Hotz head to be brought to him. And it's in rough shape. Apparently, the prisoners were always begging for food, so Gregor Clegane decided to feed them pieces of Vargo Hoat, including to Vargo Hoat himself. Yeah. 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 So, moving on. And Jamie's like, okay, well, glad he's dead. That's no good. Yeah. Uh, and, and this so is he's when like, he's like, okay, hey, until Peter gets here, Bonifer Hasty is going to hold Heron Hall. Um, and if some of you want to join him, you can. The other ones are coming. The others are coming with me. Um, yeah, you can join him if you want and if he'll have you, which later he's like, no. Nah. <laughs> he's like, no, I don't want nobody. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. And then, um, but all, all the mountains men are like, um, no, we were told we were going to get rich rewards. Like we were going to get gold and all these things. And Jamie's like. Or no, Bonifer is like, yeah, yeah, if you stay with me, like, I'll give you some land, like, as long as you have a, ha and then when you get a wife and a child, I'll give you more land. Um, and they're like, no, we need money. Like, that's not, we, that's what we were promised. And Jamie's like, if you have a problem, go to King's Landing and take it up there. Um, yeah, because uh, people have been down. very successful with getting money out of Cersei recently. <laughs> yeah literally um and then he goes back to raf and he's like hey i'm gonna go see the captives um and then he goes to see the captives and he realizes that shagwell pig and zalo are not there um and those are the ones that brienne killed right yeah yeah so but he's like oh gosh damn it and at this point, I'm like, well, just run into Brienne and you guys can exchange tales and know what's going on. Um, but then um, and then he from Lady Wentz people, there's just um, a cook left, some guy named Ben and then Pia, who mm -hmm. Jamie had seen before. But now she is just like she looks terrible Yeah, because um, the mountain broke her nose and teeth and all of those yeah. things. Yeah. And she doesn't um, have the same liveliness uh, that yeah. she had the last time Jamie saw her, which was under Bolton rule, by the way. <laughs> like, yeah, like to say that somebody was lively under the Boltons and then that has been <laughs> lost due to the mountain is like really saying something. Yeah, yeah, literally. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. But he comforts her and he's like, you're you're safe now. We'll take care of you. And then yeah. they bring in all the prisoners of them. Mm -hmm. The most prominent is Willis Manderley, who was promised to return to White Harbor in exchange for them killing Davos, remember? Yeah. And he is very happy to hear that. And mm -hmm. yeah, all these poor people. I just feel so bad for them. Yeah. But also... And he like, just oh. like... And he just breaks down when he's told that he's going to get yeah. to do that. Of course. Just... Sorry? I just said, of, of course. course. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard forced, and I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. He just completely breaks down, and it's, it's miserable. Um, and then... 
Oh, and then supper time. And he's like, bro, do not feed us goat. Um, and he's like, I'm, and he goes to have his dinner with Bonifer Hasty, and they're going to make some plans. And Bonifer Hasty is like, I don't want any of Gregor's people. They're sinners. Um, and yeah, they're just kind of talking about like oh but everyone's a sinner but like some people do worse things than others and jamie's kind of thinking yeah um if you could really tell who had sinned you would not let me be here basically like um yeah and he's like okay fine i'll take gregor's people um and he's like okay i can whatever i'll find a use for them yeah bonifer also wants pia to leave because uh she is too enticing with in her manners which yeah amazing lovely great yeah the gods definitely love you for your thoughts and opinions <laughs> yeah literally and jamie's like well this is the only home he's known she's known but you know what i will take her cuz y'all suck so yeah apparently his uh, squires don't want to wash his clothes cuz it's unmanly Ugh. um so she's yeah. going to do that but you know yeah. what, Pia? I just like I just want her to have some reprieve. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's like, "Hey, are you in your holy hundred slash holy eighty six? I'm gonna be okay to hold Heron Hall." And they're like, "Yeah." And he just goes on all this piousness. Uh, goes on yeah, piously. Yeah, like the gods about... stand with us. We have yeah. friends when we need it. Yeah. We're gonna be cool. Don't worry. Yeah. And Jane is like, you know, this place is cursed, right? He's like, no, the gods can, <laughs> they can't hurt. The, we God, God, we got oh gods. God. No hurt yeah. us. Curse. He's like, no yeah. one else who was here before had God on their side. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, yeah, like we we got the maestries got the ravens. If we got to recruit some people, Lancel is nearby. Randall's nearby, and I'm like, you really think those people are gonna like? All right, especially at Heron Hall. Like, respectfully, if someone was like, I need help, and they were at Heron Hall, I'd be like, bro, you're at Heron Hall. Like, none of us are going to survive anyway. Like, I don't know who's going to come help them. Yeah. But um, Jamie's basically like, hey, if any of the brave companions, if you get any of them, tell me at once. And this is when they have that exchange where the guy is like, oh, you're going to kill them, though. And Jamie's like, I guess you'd forgive them. And, um... But the he's saying like, he would also kill them just after yeah, forgiving them. Which, what it, difference does that make? Because now they. This is like good. the exact kind of like religious bullshit that <laughs> I can't abide. Yeah, it's basically. I'm just superior like, than you because I will let them repent before I kill them. Like, who, they, they're dead anyway. Who cares? <laughs> See, but then they're dead and they get to be absolved of their sins now they can go hang out with god basically sure i don't know i don't remember exactly what they believe happens when someone dies but yeah he's like oh my god and then i'll kill them they go to one Um, of the seven hells and i think the worse you are the deeper the hell you go to oh so like hell level one is there it's like you're not gonna get heaven but it's as good as it's gonna get (laughs) (laughs) oh my god um, yeah, and then he bas- and then he's like, and then the pious guy is like, okay, so what about if we get Clegane? And then Jamie's like, oh, pray for your life. But what he actually, he actually is like, um, uh, hello? Um, kill him. Oh, kill him, kill him, yeah. <laughs> kill him. <laughs> I made a little, I made the dead, like the, you know the one where you make like an X through the eyes, and then you make mm-hmm. like a straight line as like a spot, like a for the face part i made that and i was like what does that mean and then i was like oh dead (laughs) but i couldn't understand what i wrote but then for barrack he's like hold him because i'm gonna march him down to king's landing and have illin execute him where everyone can see why let's make an example because like they because outlaw and yeah like it's not just regular outlaw like another level of outlaw and defiance of the crown that he's like, I gotta make an example of this guy. And especially because all the regular people actually seem to like Beric, you know? 
Right. They're to like really the show them. Brotherhood Without Banners. They are on our side. They were hiding him. And they're like, this is what happens when you hide traitors. Yeah. Okay. I guess. But then it's just, it's just like the weird hypocrisy of like, Okay, but like, what about all the other people? Like, I get, I guess with like Clegane, you wouldn't want to risk him getting out again and all that stuff. Like, it makes sense to just kill him right there. It's just a PR it, thing. Yeah, but it's just dumb. I don't like it. Um, but then he's like, "Okay, cool." So that's um. Oh, and then for Thoros, he's basically just like, "Do whatever. I actually don't care." Um, and then. They kind of end the meeting right there, and he starts going towards the bear pit um, as he's just kind of thinking. Um, and Connington is there, and he's like, oh, Connington, like, what are you doing here? And Connington is like, oh, I wanted to see where the bear danced with the maiden, not so fair. And Ugh. he's just, like, being weird, and he's like, oh, my God, was she naked during the fight? And Jamie's like, no, like, what? Like, this is what happened. And he's like, why do you, you're acting like you know her. Like, why do you care? Connington's like, I, Connington tells the story of, like, being betrothed to her. Yeah, did um, we know exactly that he just, like, we know that she has nightmares about, that they were engaged. And that she has yeah. nightmares about him coming to her with a rose. But did we get the exact, like, he said that the rose is all he's she's ever going to get from him? I don't rem- I don't think so. Yeah, so no, anyway, that gets that. filled in. Yeah. Uh Yeah, but we also kind of did we know the history of like who he was? Like there was a guy Uh not really. Okay. Yeah, so basically he's There yeah. John Connington was Rhaegar's friend mm-hmm. and when Eris killed too many of his hands, he needed somebody, so he called Connington to be hand, but he lost the Battle of the Bells. So then after that, Eris got super mad and exiled him. And apparently yeah. that guy, like uh, John Connington, died in exile somewhere. But his cousin got on Robert's side in time enough to retain the knighthood, but not the lands. Wow. So this is the cousin's kid. Yeah, wow. And How like marrying Brienne would have been through. like a big upgrade for him, but yeah, this arrogant asshole, you know? Yeah. Ugh, so annoying. Um, yeah, and he's just like trashing Brienne. He's like, oh, she looked like a pig. Uh, she was ugly. She was so hairy. And then at this point, Jamie uh basically just kind of slaps him in true Cersei fashion. I was like, these siblings love to just hit people. Um, yeah, and he's like, you're speaking of a highborn lady, sir. Call her by her name. Call her Brienne. Because he, like, well, specifically, Connington calls her wench, which, if you remember, is what Jamie used to call her. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the only time I will let a man defends a woman's honor and be okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, this is this is mostly because he's more so defending it against himself and his old asshole ishness. Yeah, and I, my words are not making any sense, but hopefully you get the point. No, I understand. Um, yeah, I I love this slay Jamie. Defend defend Brienne's honor. Go off. Not even Brienne's yeah. honor. Just defend Brienne. It's not really her honor. But. Well, I, I, I put that in as like a, you know, that's how it typically goes. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, slay. Um, however, probably not great for having Connington love you. Not that you need Connington to love you. But just just the part of me that's worried about Jamie's safety is like yeah, and he does ooh. call her by her name. He calls her Brienne the Beauty, which is like not calling her by her name and is an insult on in and of itself. So like, who won this exchange anyway? Yeah, aren't we just all losers in this life? <laughs> oh my god! Okay, <laughs> moving on. Uh, I can't wait for them to run into Brienne. And then Bran can just slap him herself. 
Except she'll probably hate. Oh my gosh, she'll probably hate it though, because she's got Heil there. Now we're gonna have Connington show up. I think that would kind of wreck her a little bit. So maybe we don't need that. Maybe she'll just kill them all and we'll be better off for it. Yeah, but then she'll have nightmares about the fact that she killed them. She's no, a good she's just gonna become work. a murder machine. She's gonna embrace her inner Arya, let go of oh her inner God. Sansa, and please. Just... See, but then if she does that, then she won't stop Catelyn from being a murder machine. <laughs> She'll join Catelyn, and they will together kill all these idiots in the realm. <laughs> and if everybody is dead, nothing matters. So oh my that God. is the ultimate solution. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So uh, do I have predictions? I guess. How is his the rest of his adventure going to go? Okay. I think... He's going to go to River Run. Will he get there? I think so. He okay, get- so Jamie's going to be like the first character in the books to get to River Run not once, but twice. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of depressing. Yeah, um, I think he's going to get to River Run. And, um, or he's going to run into Brienne and... But that wouldn't really work, though, because all these hundreds of people have been sent not to find Sansa. But maybe he he would just be mad at Cersei and be like, no, I'm actually going to go off with Brienne to find um, Sansa. And that's what I'm doing. Oh, so he's going to abandon this River Run mission thing. I think if he doesn't get to River Run, it'll be because he abandoned it. Oh, okay. So either that will happen or... We'll continue on with this journey and we'll have, like, he'll get to River Run. But I'm just not sure how things are going to look there, right? Because it's like, what's he going to do that they haven't already done, you know? Like, they've been besieging, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, is he going to try and negotiate something? Or So I feel like he might just, like, try and negotiate something. But also, this is the place where he escaped from. So the people are going to be real mad. And, like, Brynden's going to have extra reason to be like, dude. But maybe he could be like, I made a promise with... Honestly, I feel like it'll probably be like him being like, I made a promise with Catelyn that I would never hurt the Starks or the Tullys. Uh, and yeah, I'm and that's why side. I'm here, to take over all your castles and lands. <laughs> no, I think he'll just be like... That's going to go over well. <laughs> no, he'll probably just be like, oh my god, but... If we do it together, then I don't have to hurt you and you don't have to hurt me. And then they'll be like, F you, you're always going to be the king slayer that you always were. And then he'll just narrowly get away. And then he'll run into Brienne. And she'll be okay. like, you're not a king slayer. You helped me. And you sent me on this cool mission. Come work with me. So either way, I guess in either scenario, <laughs> he's ending up working with Brienne at the end. All right. Um, okay. Or he just, you know, gets killed. That could also happen, but hopefully not. I mean, very much possible. Because I just don't see... I don't see the Blackfish dying right now. I mean, I guess they could capture him. Wait, you don't see... Oh, okay. But if they negotiate a piece, then that's not him dying. Yeah, that's true. But I am just cynical about the negotiation working out, I think. Okay. I think it's possible, though. I think he can be like, I think he'll probably just be like, I'll get Cersei to do this. But then now he has to go convince Cersei of the thing that he accidentally preemptively promised. Cool. Let's move on to Cersei. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So Cersei is on her way to the Sept, and she's in like a litter palican with um tana Med- merriweather and they're gossiping as per usual and uh they're talking about Lar- marjorie Largerie. i don't know why i call it because <laughs> i was gonna say marjorie keeping a lively co- court but then i said largely <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like, i guess like her entourage could be called Largerie, like because they're marjorie <laughs> at large like i don't know they're Marjorie's <coughs> Largerie. Ah, uh, I love it. Okay, so Marjorie has a bunch of people around her all the time, and it's everybody like, 
they just talk about who it is and it's like whatever um and they're talking about ooh, do you think marjorie's still virgin and tana merriweather apparently was at marjorie and renly's wedding and saw how horny renly was that night and doesn't believe that he marjorie would have not consummated the marriage but uh, yeah. George makes sure to mention for us that Loris was present in that encounter as well. Oh my god! Um, yeah. And okay, so like the this, she's like, okay, these are all people, and Loris is always with her, and like all these things, and then she's like, oh no, I just had a wicked thought, and like later Cersei like develops on this wicked thought, which is uh, like, oh. I guess Marjorie's having sex with her brother who's the king's guard because I did it. So obviously everybody does it. Yeah. And just like completely disregarding the fact that he's gay. Like when it comes to like not wanting Tommen in his company, she's like, he's gay. And then when it comes to this, she's like, he's not gay. He's full of contradictions. Yeah, I think somewhere in her wretched mind, it's like, it's like, Sure, he's gay, but, like, even a gay man can't refuse. Like, because, you know, her thing is, like, mm. like her thing yeah. is women using sexuality as a weapon. Like, that's, like, you know, you know, she's, That's her like, thesis statement. Yeah, literally. And she's, like, well, men couldn't possibly resist. And I think that a lot of homophobic people are, like. Right. Because oh, gay, being gay is like, not real. So, like, you're only gay for a little while and then you're also not gay. <laughs> Yeah, 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 because it's like, sure, you're gay, but, like, who could resist an illustrious woman, like, you know? And I think, once again, there's even that contradiction of Marjorie is irresistible because, of like, she's hot and she's pretty, whatever, but also at the same time, she's not as cool as me. Like, Cersei, it's hard to like dissect oh, Cersei's yeah. thoughts. All of her thoughts are just absolute opposites of each other. So, yeah. I, so, I mean, honestly, I'm just like, Cersei, girl, it feels so exhausting to be you. Like, yeah. imagine yeah. if you just like let everything go to hell and just hung out for a bit, you know? Yeah. Join and Catelyn it's... and Brienne in their murder spree. <laughs> and it's also, once again, another contradiction is like, she's like, I fucked my brother. Cersei, uh, or not Cersei, Marjorie and her brother must fuck. But then every time when people are like, she's just like you, an amazing queen, she's like, that little girly bitch is nothing like me. And it's like, you know what I mean? Like, she's just constantly, and she did this with Sansa too, that specific one where it was like, ugh, a pretty maid, like, I know what that's like, don't get caught up in it. But then she also was like, you're stupid and I'm not. And it just, yeah, I think she needs, she needs like a girl group that isn't she toxic needs like Tiana. therapy. She does need that. <laughs> yeah. Glad you agree. Okay, so <laughs> they are trying to get through the crowd. Um, oh, wait, sorry. One more contradiction I did want to bring up, yeah. which is she's like, so Tana's like, oh, I was there at the wedding. I don't think they couldn't have had sex. And then Cersei's like, oh, did you see a bloody sheet? And then to herself, she's also like, well, uh, it's possible for a hymen to get stretched with like, if you're riding a horse or a bike or something. Yeah. But then the importance that's placed on the hymen as like a yeah. symbol of virginity is just yeah. like, how can both things be true? Ex- exactly. It's yeah. It's like this. We- yeah. It's weird. It's weird. Cause then there's that. Yeah. But then and there's also, also the- like, if we're going to get scientific about it, not everybody's hymen looks the same way. Some people aren't born with a hymen that way. Like, you yeah. know, just it, it like do, it take doesn't your make bullshit sense at out all. of my face. I just sorry. Yeah, it really doesn't make sense. And then it's also like the class thing of like she's like, oh well, like typically it doesn't happen for highborn women, and it's just like you're considering all these factors, but then like turning them illogical. You know, it's just yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. 
I guess this is not a personal contradiction of hers. This is like their societal contradiction. But I'm just tired of it. Yeah, it's still it's still annoying. And like she definitely internalizes it and runs with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like her entire personality is internalized misogyny. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is for sure. So unfortunate. Yeah. Okay, so they are trying to get through the streets, but the streets are full of sparrows. And, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I keep skipping this because I haven't been taking good notes, but I'm going to skip back. (laughs) The other thing that other person of note that Marjorie has been hanging out with is Picel. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? I think Picel's trying to go to her because you know how he's been the only normal one recently, especially on the Smog (laughs) Council? I think because then we also get the mention of uh, the Summer Islander is always going to her, and that's the guy trying to collect the debt, right? No, um, that is Jala Barzo, who lost his kingdom, and Robert was like, yeah, I'll win you your kingdom back. Just give me a couple years, and then it just never happened. Oh, okay. And then the debt collector was another guy that she met, had to uh, meet the with? The debt collector is the Bravosi from the Iron Bank. Oh, Dyke. okay, okay. Got it right, yes. Uh... Okay, hold on. So everybody who can't find what they need from Cersei is basically is going turning to Marjorie. Because I think also, because Marjorie's reputation is going up, right? Like you said, they're running a great PR campaign. From the second they got here, they've been killing it. Um, and I And I think, yeah, it makes sense to me. Also with Marjorie kind of like placing herself in front of everyone as like hey guys hey guys and you know like the young new queen it's like it makes sense Mm -hmm. yeah so let me just then they are also talking about their kids and how Tommen's lonely and she's like hey um Tana you should bring your kid to court because it'll be great for Tommen to have a friend yeah. And she also is like, oh, yeah, I also had friends. I had Jamie and I had, what's her face? Malara. M- Malara? Yeah. Before she drowned, right? <laughs> is, is that what it says? Until she fell into the well. Right? So, like, we're getting, like, like every chapter we get a little bit more lore about this little mm. this girl that was her friend in yeah. childhood. It's like, okay. We went to see the witch together and we were so brave and we loved each other. And then she thought she was above her station. So it was not cool. And then also she died. And then also she died by getting like into falling a well. into a well. Yeah. And this is interesting <clears throat> to me because I'm like, did Cersei get mad and push her? But then I'm like, she would have thought about it that way, though. Like, she doesn't in her thoughts hide when she kills someone. Oh, like like she she, would have been like, oh, uh, she was my friend until I pushed her into a well (laughs) like that. Yeah, until she rose up. Right, because she is so not delusional and (laughs) sees her actions clearly. (laughs) (laughs) But usually, but at least when it comes to killing people, like she, well, I guess uh, you're right, though, because even sometimes for Robert, she'll be like, yeah, the hunting accident. Like, you know, so yeah, you're right. The delusion does go even this far. Okay, so I guess I'm not ruling out her killing her friend, Malara. <laughs> genuinely. Like, right. Like, uh, this Tana Merriweather, who's her new best friend, should be worried. <laughs> <laughs> they should both be worried, truly. Like, Yeah. Um, why would she kill her friend? <laughs> Uh, I don't Usually know friends she... are not the people you kill. Usually. I can see it happening once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with Cersei, man. Like, I think also just because, like, like, because she was the only other person in that tent, right? Other than the... Oh, so she knew girly. the secret that so she Cersei knew, doesn't want to And maybe she was, like, rising above her station again and, like, Ugh, aren't you worried about your little brother doing this? Or, like, maybe, like, she did something that made Cersei think she was on someone else's side. Like, I don't know exactly what she was thinking, but I think the way Cersei and her struggle with power works, I think the fact that she wasn't, like, 
as close to her as someone like Jamie, and she knew all these things about her, I think Cersei wouldn't have hesitated to just cut her off mm-hmm. if she did like one thing out of line, you know? Right. Okay. That fits with her character. So back to Tana and her son, who is six years old. And she's like, no, nah, he's doing well where he is. <laughs> um, she's do like, think- I don't need to bring him here, which honestly, yeah, makes sense. I wouldn't put my son in danger like that either. Mm-hmm. So then they're talking about the high septons and how they're chosen and all of that. And how they give up their name when they become high septon. Hey, wait, but right, but right before they talk about that, she's talking about like, oh, when my father sent me to court, I wept and Jamie raged till my aunt told ah. me that no one in King's Landing that I need ever fear. And I'm like, that's not true, right? Like, she's just completely pulling this out of her ass. Because I hey, don't know why it was. Wasn't why she, wouldn't it be true? Okay, because a. Wasn't she I'm, happy because she wanted to marry Rhaegar, or was the Rhaegar stuff not in the question? Not in question. I yet? think by this time. Oh, actually, I don't know the timeline whether whether she had already been rejected or not. Right. But I mean, maybe she. Because I think like, the idea was her going to court, and then she was going to go to court, and eventually she was going to become Rhaegar's wife. Right. Right, but she was like ten when they said no. Right. Right. So I feel like she was... Why would her dad send for her if the no had already happened? Mm. Good question. I don't know. Somebody tell us. Because I feel like this would be after, right? And by then... Or not after. Like, before getting a no. And at that point, doesn't she already want to marry Rhaegar? Or is it like... Well, maybe she wants to marry Rhaegar, but also... Jamie. In yeah and like leaving your home as a kid right. like that's not easy ever that's so, true because then she's like oh my aunt sent just because she's cersei me doesn't no exclude her from having you know being homesick that's true yeah because then she's like oh she, i was she told me that i shouldn't fear anyone in king's landing and at least that i just was like huh i don't know it just was like a I don't know, I guess, like, just with the level of cunning that she is and tries to be, it's kind of like, did you really buy that? Are you just saying that to Meriwether now so she'll, like, bring her kid? Like, it kind of feels like she's downplaying King's Landing, which is kind of, like, in direct opposition to all of their conversations well, all the time. Well, she says what will benefit benefit her in each conversation, and in this conversation, she wants her kid to come to court, so she's going to say what it's going to take, you know? Yeah, I guess. I guess that's what's happening. I just was... It just bothers me, because I'm like, ugh, Cersei, I think. Right. Yeah. But so anyway, yeah, not to dwell. Now on to the names. <laughs> yes, yes, <yeah>, sorry. <laughs> so... They don't have names because they give up their names once they become High Septon. So they have to be referred to as the fat one or the one before the fat one or the one who died in his sleep. Like, can't you at least number them? Like, how hard would that be? (laughs) Yeah, literally. Like, High Septon the third, High Septon the 45th. Like, (laughs) you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, instead Um, of going to just insults about their appearance. Well, I mean, not like being fat is not an insult, but just calling somebody by their appearance is just like in yeah, and of itself is insulting. Exactly. Like, I feel like it's like if you being the was, short one and me it, being the tall one. <laughs> yeah, it's not a, like that's not an insult, right? But when someone says it, it feels insulting, even if it's not an insult. Like if somebody comes up to me and is like, you, you with the with the bushy <laughs> eyebrows that's not an insult okay i guess sometimes people do consider that an insult but at the end of the day Sorry, that's kind of a you with the bushy <laughs> no that's if what somebody I'm gonna call is you like from now on. It literally even if somebody was like you with the long hair it comes across as an insult yeah because you're not bothering to say acknowledge any, like, them my name, as any or like, person yeah or like hey miss high septon like you know like they're, you're saying so I'm not right like it's not no it's definitely at the disrespectful at end of the day it's an insult like 
it yeah so what i'm saying is number those people <laughs> yes yeah. because numbering people definitely humanizes okay, them shush. that is the stance i'm taking shush. here no this is different we're just numbering <laughs> for the order the number has nothing to do with their identity their appearance no yeah either. like when referring to like in official speech yeah. yeah like when you're talking to them just call them high septum because why does it matter just yeah anyway so anyway i just have <laughs> I to also fear that we are just dwelling <laughs> are we i don't know what dwelling means <laughs> let's look it up and <laughs> then we shall <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um okay so usually it's the most devout i guess that's like the people who pick who the high septum's going to be pick somebody amongst themselves but this time it's somebody who is not from amongst themselves and the other times that it was somebody not from the devout, most devout was during Baylor the blessed's rule yeah and uh, he named like a regular old smith and then he named an 8 year old boy mm -hmm. so yeah I don't, and then, yeah, Meriwether's like, oh, eight, maybe my son could be high seven. And he's like, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh, yeah, no. So she's like, oh, does he pray a lot? And she's like, no, he prefers to play with swords. A real boy then. Ugh. <laughs> oh my God. Can he name all seven gods? I mean, seven gods, not that many. <laughs> <laughs> Can you name all seven gods, Hermit? You laugh Bro. as if. I can name like three. Let's no, test but the reason the reason okay, wait, pause and then I, I'll go through it. But the reason that I the reason that I laugh is I because I see you looking them up in the background. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I'm uh the reason that I laugh is cause uh, oh the sparrow made it. Um the reason that I laugh is cause like when you're like six years old and anybody asks you to recite a list of anything, you're probably gonna mess up, even though it's a list of seven, you know? Like oh, you know right. when I they, forgot he's six. They, you know when they would like get you to say like the alphabet song and like sometimes you could panic and, well alphabet song I don't think you'd mess up because it's a song. But if somebody was like count by fives backwards and forwards and it's already but something you're not five? very interested in. Nobody's counting by five at age six. Actually, no, I, I literally learned multiplication six. tables at age six. Exactly. What am I talking about? I was like, you and I okay. were, we, like, okay, so we approached math with, like, the Indian system. Like, we knew okay. math. Yeah, I knew how to, the multiplication tables up to 12. Yeah, you're right. It's literally. just that I have, like, no sense of what kids know at what age anymore. Right. Like, when somebody's yeah. like, oh, my God, my kid's five months old and he can sit i'm like that's an accomplishment i guess <laughs> like, <laughs> like i have no idea right yeah that's funny oh. um yeah but no for a six-year-old i feel like this could be a lot because okay think about remember when we used to go to gordvara this is literally us having to recite das guruan's names and imagine yeah, you but were we did it six. but we'd also Oh, that's true. Because these people would be raised doing it, and we—that's true. Because I guess my thing is okay. I didn't start. You've learning delayed that's... enough. Now name the seven. Okay, uh, the maiden, the sparrow. The what? No, wait, what? no, There's wait, wait, no, shush, shush, shush. I know this. I know this. I know the maiden, the crone, the wait. I know this. The, the no, shush, not the builder. The the. Oh, what's the builder one where they're constantly the Smith, the Smith, mm -hmm. um, the father, right? There's a father. Yeah. Um, the the uh, wait, no, I literally know them. Okay, hold on. Uh, the maiden, the sp the. <laughs> you said father. What is the logical next one? The mother. Oh yeah, because the mother and maiden are different. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The uh, the, uh, literally, the maiden could not be the mother. The whole point is that she's a virgin. <laughs> okay, but Virgin Mary, bro. Other yeah, religions but they don't, don't have do Jesus like in this world. <laughs> I know, but that's the 
overarching religion that's shoved down our throats, okay? <laughs> so that's the one that I, I think of that more than the one that I was raised with, okay? Um, okay, uh, okay, wait, how many is that? That's Maiden, that's Five. Mother, that's Father, that's Crone, and that's Warrior. Six. I can't remember the seventh one. The Fighter, the Builder. You said warrior and smith. Oh, I said them? Yeah. Oh, I got all seven? No, you oh. said six, including oh, those. Oh, okay. Don't be okay. celebrating yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, da, da, da. I see somebody's going to fail their midterm today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I can't think of the seventh one. The Stranger, God of <gasps> Death. Oh, wait, yes. Oh, for some reason in my head, I'd already said the death one. But I still couldn't remember the name of the death one. In my head, it was just the death one. <laughs> Six out of okay. seven. Okay, wait, that's actually good. I did double. Hey. It's okay. No, it's pretty good. I kind of ate. But to be fair, we've been talking about these a lot recently. I think if you asked me to name them 10 chapters ago, I probably could have done two at most. Right. Okay. So, now let's go visit the seven. <laughs> oh my god. Um, finally, we've gotten to the point that I wanted to jump to. They can't get through the streets because there's too many damn sparrows. And so they're like, oh, we'll bring some more guards to help clear the way. And so she's like, I don't got the time, so I'm going to walk. So she gets out and walks. And all these people are basically camped out in the streets outside the sept. And she's not pleased to see it, but she's trying to be like, oh, yeah, sorry for your losses. The king will avenge you. And everybody's like, like two people cheer and everybody else is like, we don't want vengeance. We want protection. Mm -hmm. Right. I covered it all, I think. Yeah. And uh, so they get to the gates and there are two sparrows blocking the way. And she's looking for her, like, regulars who <laughs> wash her feet every her time regulars. she visits. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they're like, no, though we don't know who those who those are. We are here and we can't allow weapons to be taken into the sept. And yeah. so she has to leave her king's guard behind. And... Oh yeah, the one of the things that's in the plaza, like by the uh, statue of Baylor, they have piled up all the bones and skulls of all the holy people that were killed in the war. Yeah. So it's uh, supposed to, you know, bring a message. All yeah. the me only message it sends to her is like, "Ugh, there's nowhere to walk, and it stinks here." <laughs> yeah. Sad. Yeah. So she has to go into the sept on her own. She gets in and um when she gets in there's a bunch a bunch of septons on their knees scrubbing the floor and the mm -hmm. first one she comes across is uh septon Reynard one of one of her aforementioned regulars and uh, she's like, what are you doing on your knees? You are like one of the high people. Like, you know, you should be, uh, you know, sitting around watching TV. I don't know. Um, yeah. And this is when one of the other people speaks up and is like, he's cleaning the floor. floor. Work is a form of play. Pl work is a form of prayer. Most pleasing to the smith. Okay. That was a very difficult sentence. Um. Oh my god. Yeah, and uh, it is the new High Septon. He's clean but raggedy, you know. Yeah. And uh, he's got bare feet, like our Septon Mirabald. Mm hmm. And uh, he utilizes the royal we in his conversation, which threw me off every time. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um. So she's like, oh, where's this other guy? And he's like, um, he was too fat. So we're starving him in a cell. It's the Ooh. godly way. Um, yeah. And 
She's like, well, is this how you greet me with a scrub brush in your hand dripping water? You should be wearing a crown and all this fancy clothing and, you know, welcome me at the gates. And he's like, um, actually, we sold that crown and all this fancy clothes for money to feed the people because clothes and gold don't feed people. Mm hmm. And she's just, she just, like, has nothing to say to that. Yeah, she's like, um, oh my god. He is utterly mad for thinking of food over... Wow, <laughs> Like, yeah. such a perspective of somebody that has never had to worry about a meal, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. I said the word meal, and then immediately my stomach grumbled, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so... She's like, can we talk in private? Hey, like, I just, I have a question kind of about the whole conflict with like the sparrows, right? Mm -hmm. So they are mad. They are like, we are being oh, like, okay. So you're saying they are angry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. They are angry and they are frustrated and they're like, people are just coming and slaughtering us, hurting us, everything. We are the faith. Like we're supposed to be this like you know, people who don't get, like, like hurt we're off in limits. the way of war. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is not, we're not about your stupid, like, man versus man battles. You know, we're about God, you know? So they're mad about that. So is this, like, typical of, like, sort of, like, when Robert's Rebellion happened, or, like, when Greyjoy's Rebellion was happening, or, like, when Eris would start doing stuff like do people kind of start targeting the faith and like using that as a way of like i don't know if they were specifically just, targeted or just not just spared. like, like yeah, what like, happened to them is what happened to everybody yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's tr yeah i think i just worded it wrong so i guess i'm just wondering like does this always happen and how do they usually deal with it or is it because with this conflict specifically there's so many more people involved, so many more different groups, so much messiness. Like, you know. Well, apparently 300 years ago, they were allowed to carry weapons and would defend themselves. Right. When and conflict then arose. Just but then Magor the Cruel outlawed it. And yeah. I guess since then, they have been suffering. And this was just kind of the. And I guess, point. like. Like, we don't hear all, all the atrocities from Robert's Rebellion. Yeah. I don't doubt that they weren't bad. Right. But maybe this is like an this war of like the five kings has extended for so long and it's like okay, right yeah. on the edge of winter and like there's yeah, yeah, you yeah. know maybe uh, it's this just is so much more desperate and dire. Potentially, yeah. Okay. So that's kind like, of what I, I was don't thinking, doubt that was, they were harmed yeah. in the past. Because he says right. like we've been praying for three hundred years to be able to defend ourselves, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I just, and I guess my, also, also my question is like, we don't have any context yet, right? Ooh. For why this high Septon was specifically selected. Cause you know how the other guy was going to be selected, but then the right. sparrows showed up. And Let's talk about that. The only other thing I want to mention about the previous thing is that before Robert, they were dealing with Targaryens. Mm hmm. And for the longest time, Targaryens had dragons, so there's, like, not a lot of pushback you can have when you're facing dragons. Yeah. Like, he talks about how, oh, when Aegon landed on these shores, the High Septon had to pray for days to see if this was the right decision, and it really just was like, we're gonna die if, he, if we don't <laughs> let him be king. Right, yeah. So, you know, like, for hundreds of years, that would have kept them quiet, and then... Later on, maybe the Targaryen reputation would have kept it, but yeah, like, like they, the, like there probably were other rebellions before, like, or not rebellions, but just like outcries, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then in terms of picking the High Septon, yeah, so they were almost there. Were, this one guy from the most devout was almost winning. He was nine votes away from winning. Yeah. When the sparrows burst in with their weapons and uh, had their leader, this guy, I assume, on their shoulders and installed him as the High Septon. That is the rumor. 
So what was your question? I guess my question is like, so the sparrows came in, like, I guess like how, is it just because they outnumbered the most Mm -hmm. devout? You know what I mean? Because now, like, you know how yeah, it was a clearly were... like a takeover by force. Okay, okay, so, so they just out. Okay, that makes sense because Cersei's them. people were all like literally scrubbing the floor, so it's like they obviously have kind like. So I guess like the most devout have kind of accepted that this is happening. Like, I guess the part I'm confused about is there isn't isn't any pushback from them. Are they well, cool okay, with it? Okay, how much pushback like... can you have when there's literally people standing outside your door with weapons threatening to kill you? Yeah, but like I guess I'm just surprised that they haven't gone to Cersei and been like, "Hey, maybe they haven't been allowed to." Mm, okay. I see. I guess I just okay, cuz I guess the way that this chapter and happens, the crown is not supposed to interfere in that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. So then they can just come in and, like, hostile take over this ish all the time for each well, other? Well, they claim to be faith of the faith, so, like, what makes the most devout more holy than them, you know? like Right. Okay, so the sparrows are just everybody from all over who's been coming and has banded together and made their way here, yeah. right? And then the most devout are the people who've specifically been at... Like, they are the power structure of the sept. Of the sept. Okay. But like, they're, they're like, the- so, like, if the high septon is the pope, they are the pope's attendants. So not attendants. Like, I don't know the name. Okay, you know what? I shouldn't have used the Catholic analogy if I could, if I don't know the terminology. But there was, like, people who are, like, at the top of the hierarchy yeah. in the religious system. And these people are them. Okay, and that's be and that's why they're the ones stationed at like the biggest sept, which yes. would be the one at King's Landing. Okay, but like, but the sparrows weren't like a specific group. The sparrows formed from like they formed that coalition from like like there were people from like River Run who came in and the people like coming yeah from, like, ever all over the realm yeah. Okay, and all the rest of those people are well just, mostly like, from the Riverlands because that's where most of the devastation happens, right? But yeah, all okay. over. But technically, they're all just like people within the faith of the seven. Yeah, and they've banded together, and that or like the people, like not ne- necessarily that they were septons before, but they saw the atrocities being committed against okay. septs and their people, and they were like, "I b- believe in the seven, so now I'm gonna fight for the seven, You know? Okay, got it. I guess I like just like they need probably clar- recruited as they went along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just wanted clarification on the who's who <laughs> part of it cuz I couldn't remember. All right. Okay, cool. So they go into the inner section of the sept and okay, what are they talking about? Mm. Oh, she immediately gets to like, um, these sparrows need to go. And he's like, where are they going to go? She's like, back to where they came from. And he's like, well, they came from everywhere. And also their homes and everything were destroyed. So what do you want them to do? Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, they are bespoiling the plaza with their pigs and goats and night soil. And he's like, well, all of that can be washed away more so than the blood that was spilled here by executing Ned Stark. So, like, that's coming to bite her in the ass. Mm -hmm. Um, And she's like, well, Joffrey made a rash decision. It wasn't smart, and we shouldn't have done it. But, uh, you know. We did. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, he was a traitor, so we were justified. And he's like, well, you know, maybe you should have forgiven him. Oh, my God. And as... Baylor did his enemies and she's like well Baylor was super not not super what am I saying well Baylor she's basically like Baylor Baylor wasn't so great he imprisoned his own sisters whose only crime was being beautiful so (laughs) tells us a little bit about that guy um lovely and uh and when she heard that story, she'd taken it personally and pinched Tyrion till he cried. Mm-hmm. 
which is ridiculous. Like, girl yeah. has the most. And she's like, I didn't do enough. I should have killed him right then and there. Yeah. Just her her tendencies are terrifying. Yeah, and the fact that she was doing it as like at four, five, six exactly. years old. Exactly. <laughs> like, girl, come on. Like, I mean, oh I can God. like be like side eyeing your siblings because if you hear about somebody else's siblings, you know, doing this. <laughs> but also, Jamie's your brother, dude. Like, she never yeah. like considers that. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. And she's like, oh well. Tommen will also practice forgiveness by forgiving the sparrows once they leave and go back <laughs> to their homes. And he's like, they have nowhere to go to. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, well, war is dreadful, but this is the work of Stannis. And she's trying to like work this in as much as she can of like how Stannis is a demon worshiper and like against yeah. the faith. So everything is his fault and all of that. Yeah. And uh, he's like, well, I hear that uh, it wasn't just the others. It was also the Lannisters. And she's like, well, he can't be held. Uh, and he's, spe- oh, God. He specifies the actions of Gregor, no, Sandor Clegane recently at the salt pans. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to talk about it. It's too much. So I'm going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he just is the worst. Does the worst. Yeah, like, does... Like, if he was brought back to life, like you said, you know, that I don't see the Sandor we knew committing these actions. Do you? Yeah, I don't think so. Like, this is... This is no... So what do you think is going on? I think... I think it's like the... Like... You know how, like, I don't think Catelyn, as we knew her, would have gone on a revenge spree like that. Right. So, like, something about coming back from the dead is changing their fundamental, like, Yeah, because you're not, yeah, like, you're not human, right? You're just, I think it's just kind of like, you're, you have, like, the same, like, sort of, like, these were my friends, these were my enemies type thing, probably. But I don't think you really have any, like, you can't really, like, you don't have, like, morals and ethics, Mm. you know? Because you're kind of just a shell of who you were, I think. That makes sense. Okay. So I think this is just the parts of him that were very, like, well, everybody sucks, and who's really a knight, and why would anyone do anything good ever? Like, those parts of him that were always sort of there, I think this is just that. Okay, well, Cersei says to that, basically, Tom and can't be held responsible for everyone who's ever served him. And uh, that's why we dismissed Sandor Clegane, not that he himself dismissed himself, mm-hmm. you know? like <laughs> Yeah. And I just, what I really liked, like, I don't agree with everything that this guy's putting forward, right? This High Septon guy's putting forward, obviously, like, he has some things where I'm just, like, heavy side-eye. But it was like, just for nice. for example... Like, we're gonna, like, this guy who's fat needs to be starved Uh, to, like, what? And, like, he says a couple other things, too, where I'm like, well, you're kind of getting to the point, but not totally. Like, you know? Um, Because even that is... point those out to me, because I want to hear them. Okay, I I think, I think I have them in my notes as they come up. But then, like, but then I do agree with his things of, like, we didn't need all these things. It's important for people to be fed. So we sold mm-hmm. all the things that, like, we would have owned. I would have, we, I would have owned as the High Septon. <laughs> yes. Um, and, like, you're not allowed to bring weapons in here. It's literally a sept. And, like, restoring some of those fundamentals. Um, but, but does it, so, okay, that's also a question. Now that they are allowed to carry weapons, does that mean that they also won't bring their own weapons into the sept? I don't know, maybe. Because maybe the Sept is the only holy place where you don't. I think it's just the thing But it's also like, remember um, the Dothraki city where it was a rule that you can't bring weapons, but people (laughs) But you can kill kill someone to death? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I just said you can kill someone to death. Yes. (laughs) Ignore me. (laughs) I did try to, but then you yourself (laughs) brought it up. (laughs) 
Uh, um, <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, she's like, well, you know, it's uh, we dismissed him. But anyway, like, sorry. Well, what I was trying to say is, even though I don't agree with everything. I love somebody standing there and just calling Cersei out and being like, mm. uh-huh, you think, because as much as she tries to be like, Stannis did this, Stannis did this, he's kind of matching her blow for blow and is like, yeah, but he, like, this guy was your guy until he left. And, like, they talk about lions doing this, blah, 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 blah. And it's just, I know Cersei doesn't take it that way, but it's just nice to see somebody fighting for the people like for right. real for real a little bit you know yeah for the people that confine to his rule of deserving of <laughs> rights okay you know what everybody can't be perfect at least because the thing is nobody in this land is here for the common people and he's the only one even sort of doing it so for now right. i'm going to take what i'm just pointing it out us. i'm just pointing it out <laughs> yeah like i said he ain't perfect i don't agree with everything but I like him. I like just some guy calling out a rich person, you know? Yeah. It's nice. So basically she's like, get to the point. Why won't you bless Tommen? And he's like, well, I have to pray on it. Like going into that whole story about uh, yeah. Aegon the <laughs> Conqueror. And she's like, well, all these other kings are for the false gods. Tommen's the only one who defends the holy faith. And he's like, well, everybody dies anyway. And she's like, well, if you give your blessing, we'll put an end to it. And he's, she's like, no. He's like, how exactly are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, will he give us men to guard our septas against the wolves and lions? And then she's like, I will pretend you did not mention lions. Like, she's mm -hmm. accomplishing something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and um, she does a bunch of victim blaming in her inner dialogue. And all she then comes to is like, well, let your sparrows have weapons. And then he's like, well, actually, there's all these laws that prohibit that. And she's like, well, Thomas King, wink, now wink, I'm not nudge, nudge. <laughs> uh, And she, so was she, he just baiting her into this the whole time? Well, she thinks she's baiting him. <laughs> but yeah, I but might we be, all know. <laughs> yeah, I might agree with you, whereas I think he is Yeah, because every time he was like, uh, we can't, yeah. if only somebody could defend us. If, yeah. like, you know, and then what does, he says something earlier too. Like, he says a few things where it's kind of like, Okay, so this is what you wanted, right? Like, he literally says, we ask no vengeance for our death, only protection for the living, for the septs and holy places. Which is sort of saying, mm -hmm. either you protect us or we protect, right? Like, what yeah. else does protection mean? Protection, and like, when she's like, oh, he'll stop everybody, he literally then questions, like, well, how's he going to do that? So I think yeah, he is and even like, this the way this conversation goes, exactly. he's like, but the laws, and she's like, exactly, done. yeah. She let but that in, hang there, waiting for him to rise to the bait. Yeah, and it's <laughs> like Cersei. <laughs> this isn't you. This is You're why her parties are my favorite. <laughs> Literally, it's like Cersei. You did nothing. You did exactly what he wanted you to do, and not that that's like. Oh, I haven't decided yet if it if the overall result of this is good or bad. But like you didn't win this, you know? This you didn't trick yeah. anybody. Like Yeah, he's like, Well, yeah, the faith militant reborn would be the answer to three hundred years of prayers. Mm -hmm. And if he were to allow me to restore the ancient blessed orders of the sword and star, every godly man in the seven kingdoms would know him to be our true and rightful lord. Mm -hmm. And Cersei's like, okay, well, yes, that would be nice, but like, we're so burdened down with this debt we owe. Maybe we can work out a little thing and you can forgive us the 900,000 dragons. <laughs> that is an incredulous amount. Yeah. But <laughs> also, this guy probably knows that there's no way he's getting it, so. Right. He may as well get something out of it. Yeah. 
And he's like, okay, fine, I guess. Oh, yeah, because he's like, that's a big amount. And she's like, well, is it gold you want or protection? And Ooh. he's like, okay, well, the debt shall be forgiven and King Tommen will have his blessing. And uh, we shall have our weapons. And oh uh, she's like, you got it. I'll drop the papers, have Tom and Tom sign and seal them. And this is my favorite part. <laughs> if there was one part of kingship that Tom and loved, it was playing with his seal. Aww, Aww. Adorable. <laughs> adorable. And uh, she like gets up, very satisfied with herself. Even her lord father couldn't have done no better. Mm -hmm. At a stroke, she had rid King's Landing of the Plague of Sparrows, scare secured Tommen's blessing and lessen the crown's debt close to about half a million mm -hmm. and later on with Tana, like she's also thinking like mm, i can also get these people to fight against stannis because he is um not In for the faith opposition, so. yeah but um, i guess she... my question is is that how the faith militant worked that I'm, is sure, good... I'm sure, I'm sure, because the thing is, now they could make it work however they want, right? Because right. it's been 300 years, no one's going to be like, back in my day, you guys did it this way. Um, like, but like, I guess my question is, the original Faith Militant, like, and they've spent this whole thing asking about protection, right? And like, mm -hmm. the guy we ran into on the road, who um, was also a dwarf, and like, he got killed because people like Cersei's people thought he was Tyrion like like you know they've been talking about protection and all these things like this is kind of the first time that a militia has come up right, right. at least from what I remember so I guess my thing is like I feel like a lot of people aren't looking for the go kill people who don't believe in our religion part of it like right. I feel like a lot of the people at least right now are just like maybe focused. they don't see their purpose as defending the faith of, by killing people of other faith yeah. but more so just by just from people like maybe it's and maybe this is just me yeah. having and like sh okay. a rosy eyed view but to <clears throat> me it just feels like that a lot of these reasonable people would be like hey these weapons are just to be used as protection but then also i guess like if you after I, it's the thing of like if you suffer for a bit then sometimes that can prompt you to start becoming the villain so maybe these people are just so tired of being antagonized that they're going to become the antagonist like i just i just wonder how this is going to go and i fear for how it's going to go mm. because it's so you don't think this was a successful deal on cersei's part i don't know Maybe for Cersei it was good, right? Right. But I think for the overall good of Westeros, I don't know if it was a uh -huh. good move. But I also, also know that the Lannister's job isn't to think about what's good for the realm, it's to think about what's good for her. Yeah. And maybe for also, Cersei this was smart. I don't know. This deal is not very well defined. It's just like, she's like, yeah, you yeah. can have weapons. Like, but who's in charge of the weapons? Who controls this, like, literal army? that now yeah. exists in the realm you know yeah literally like none of that it, it, she like she was never like oh but if tommen says they can't do something then like that's the end like you literally know? she like, just they kind of be assumed... like tommen is an incest baby we want to kill him like you know <laughs> yeah literally she just assumed that everything else would work out like yeah and it's just like it's also this thing of like are they gonna now like did I call like, him Thomas instead of Tommen? You might have. I didn't notice. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I just <laughs> had that thought. No, you're good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's just so much uncertainty. And like, this could go, this could just, this could go well. But the fact that they're calling it the Faith Militant Reborn just doesn't really, it's not really a good connotation for me. <laughs> it's not exactly right. giving protection. It, it's giving like aggression aggression thank you yeah it's so i don't know i just i don't have very high hopes for this but i'm trying to think about the best case scenario <laughs> but it's just right. I, it just once again it sucks because it's like all of these people have banded together and i'm sure for a lot of them their purpose is just like protection and like i just want to serve god and like not die and like mind my own business right 
But the thing is, if this doesn't go well, or if, like, the people in charge are taking it more in the direction of, like, well, I know you guys want peace, but if you want peace, first we have to go fight all these people. And then now their whole, like, people are getting wrecked, people are dying, like, you know? I don't know. And it's just, like, further, like, it's just even worse for these, like, poor people, you know? I don't yeah. know. It's just it's kind of the outlaw thing again, right? Of like, well, don't worry. Like, once we fight for ourselves, we'll be fine. But it's like, by the time you're done the fight, like, how much more life do you have left in you? Or are you already dead? Like, you know? Good like, philosophical questions that we will not answer. <laughs> because like, Cersei we, is too busy Are they going to go extinct? Like, they could literally go extinct. Who can go extinct? The Faith. If enough of their people die, if this goes badly for them, right? Right. Huh. That's an interesting thought. I don't know. I just, I'm just worried for these people, man. I just, I don't know. Like, and I honestly don't, like, I think this is one of the few Cersei decisions where I'm not sitting here like, Cersei, you screwed yourself over and you shot yourself in the foot. Like, I'm just kind of thinking about the world for them. Like, how's this going to go? But right. anyway... Yeah, that happens, and okay. then she leaves. Cersei celebrates on the way back to the castle. They get to the mm -hmm. castle, run into Marjorie coming back from the woods, mm -hmm. and they've been picking autumn flowers, and uh, she's always, like, going off on these rides, sometimes, like, boat rides, sometimes, like, riding across the river into the forest, like, um, many times she goes out to the markets and hangs out with the people, you know, the PR campaign we talked about. Mm -hmm. and yeah. she wants Tommen to go with him, and sometimes Cersei lets him, but not as much as Marjorie would want, mm -hmm. or Tommen would want, because Tommen's like, I want to do it, but she's like, no, they remember the riot? They might kill you and pick you apart. And he's mm -hmm. like, if we mingle with the comments, they will love us better, which is clearly like a Marjorie line. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, that girl is trying to steal him from me, which is... Great mindset, Cersei. Great mindset. <laughs> and then she's like, hmm. She knew Joffrey was too strong with for her and remembers like the gold coin that they found and is like, maybe they had something about what to do with Joffrey being killed. And she's like, yeah, they're all connected. Them and Tyrion and Sansa and all of them colluding. And oh my I mean, God. honestly, she's not that far from the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for the Tyrion part. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Real. Um. And, uh, yeah, Marjorie's like, hey, you should have come with us. It would have been fun. And I don't want people to see us as rivals. And Cersei's like, well, I've never thought of you as a rival, not even for a moment. <laughs> and, like, to this, Marjorie responds, I'm so pleased to hear that. And Cersei's thought is the girl did not seem to realize that she had been cut. I don't know how accurate that is. I feel like Marjorie it's not knows exactly accurate. what Cersei's saying. Marjorie ain't like... dumb. Marjorie, <laughs> see, the thing about Marjorie is she doesn't succumb to her pettiness like Cersei does. Like, Cersei is just very, like, she is just ruled by that a little bit sometimes. And she doesn't understand why Marjorie wouldn't. Yeah. And I feel like we see this in, like, all of their interactions where she's like, ugh. I made fun of her and she didn't even realize it. And it's like, no, she just probably realized that that wasn't really a good use of her energy. Like, yuck. Yeah. So, yeah, she's, this is when she's like reminded of how Robert would always go hunting and how that was the time that she and Jamie would get it on and how mm -hmm. she's like, hmm, her brother's always with her. So, mm -hmm. obviously they're having sex. And then she like laughs out loud at that. <laughs> like she can't even oh like. Oh my God. <laughs> like you can't <laughs> okay <laughs> she can't yeah she, she just has and no Marge control just like um want to share what the joke is and Cersei's is just like you will i promise you you will like what what is this threat joke yeah nonsense <laughs> yeah it, yeah it's weird like it's really okay weird. We're in her head, so we see the crazy, right? Like, we mm -hmm. experience it firsthand. But honestly, like, just being around her, I don't think you're that far removed from <laughs> experiencing it either. Oh, my God, right. Cause just because of the way she's acting, you're just like, what is going on in that head of hers? Yeah. That's funny. 
Man, Cersei. Yeah. Tom I- meds would do you so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, I did have a weird thought that I kind of forgot about related to um the militia that we're now forming okay this i don't know how much i believe this but it was a passing thought so i'm gonna say it in case it happens you know how melisandra is got like magic yes and you know how thoros has got magic yes and you know how faceless men have got magic Okay, can you just get to the end of this? No, no, just let me. No, let yes. me. It's no, it's fine. And you know how weirwoods are like magical, and we got like the wolves and like blah blah blah. Like yes. North. Okay. What's the only religion where we haven't had magic stuff show up yet? The religion of the seven, right? Mm-hmm. What so are you saying the- it's going to show up now? Yeah. What if the missing piece was that they weren't like. They didn't have, like, swords and stuff going on. Like, they weren't thinking <laughs> Swords of... give you magic? Not swords give you magic, but, like, that's just an example. Like, for example, Melisandre was like, hey, God. Because, you know, she's trying to defend R'hllor against the... Wait, is L- R'hllor her guy or the guy she's defending against? No, R'hllor's her guy and the Great Other is the other yes. guy. Yes, <laughs> okay, so she's defending against the Great Other, right? And she's like, hey, God, I need weapons, right? So she gets them. And then, um, I mean, the Northern religion is kind of going extinct. So it makes sense that they need, like, weapons to keep themselves afloat, right? Uh, Interesting ideas about what but, keeps a uh, religion or faith going. <laughs> no, like, in this, in the context of this universe, okay, I'm just trying to compare to, like, Melisandre and blah, blah, blah. But then with this one, right, it's like... Okay, okay, I don't know how to say this. So, like, okay, hold on, brain. Like, if if now they have this military thing going on where they're going to either use it for protection or, like, use it for antagonizing people, right? They're going to do this. So maybe now they, like, in their logic, pray to God and are like, hey, God, we need, like, weapons and then now that's like a medium where the magic can show up sure okay interesting thought i'm too i don't think i made any sense i just like i said it was a passing thought i don't know how attached i am to it i just kind of thought about it i was like what if this is a way for magic to show up in their religion because there's already magic in all the other religions but this is the only one that we haven't seen any sort of payoff for you know like we've never seen right. the seven actually do anything but every other religion has maybe done at there's least something. like a point to that maybe there's a reason <laughs> like the George right like the most way. widespread spread religion is the one that's not doing anything for them yeah maybe yeah i don't know anyway okay. that was a lot of ramble. So, predict i guess we honestly we covered the predictions really we did i think um yeah, yeah literally, like, I can't that. think of anything that we haven't talked about, like. Yeah. There was, there was just a cute What is moment. she going to do oh. about... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. This wasn't prediction. This is just before prediction, just talking about the Cersei chapter. There was one moment where, like, she's thinking about, like, her new ships that are being created. Like, oh, yes. Brought out. How and, did I forget and, this? And, to- and she let Tom and... Name, name the last five, five of them and he chose moon boy as a name for one of them and then and when for- he got pushed back he finally named it L- <laughs> princess marcella after yeah. like he, that didn't ever occur to him, <laughs> to occur to him before. all his other names are like lady marjorie or like Qu- king renly or lord Len- renly or like all the like high garden related <laughs> names yeah he just instantly is like oh and i'm like damn bro yeah um anyway oh one of them oh yeah speaking of internalized misogyny uh the head ship i don't know what it's called like the main ship 
is going to be named Lord Tywin. And mm-hmm. she's like, oh, I gave consent because I want to see people refer to her father as a she. Mm-hmm. As if it's some kind of insult. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, oh, Cersei. Yeah. I guess that's what she's saying. I, I don't think I thought about this too much, but I guess I just hoped it was more of like a... Because every other time what she was like... What else would she be saying? Well, and not what else would she be saying. Because you know how, like, I guess this is just her grief and her tendency to be a walking contradiction. Because so many times she'll be like, how dare we dishonor my father, blah, blah, blah. And with her mm. oh, internalized yeah. stuff, wouldn't it be weird for her to see that as a... Like, if she sees that as an insult, then why would she do it if she's trying to honor her father? But it's I guess like, she is a contradiction. Because, like, the outlook is that his name is the head of the head ship, but, like, so internally to her. Right. Yeah. So nobody, everyone else is honoring him, which is what she wants, but she gets to kind of yes. do it at his expense. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, so, next chapters. Mm-hmm. Two chapters. Yeah. Hope's predictions. Um, I'd like to see John and Danny. Well, you're not going to see them. Lovely. So we're going <laughs> to see, read chapters 29 and 30. Mm-hmm. And chapter 29 is called The Reaver. What is that? R-E-A-V-E-R. You tell me. I don't know what a reaver is. What is a re? Can I search this word up? Sure. Okay. I don't think you'll get any spoilers as long unless you put like a song of ice and fire after it. <laughs> okay, reaver. What does this? To carry off properties, prisoners by force, transitive, full by to like a looter, strip. basically. Strip. Oh, okay. The reaver. Okay, who's stealing stuff? Um. Uh. Wait, is this Davos? Since when is Davos a looter? Well, also he's you know, dead. It's like a, but remember, I don't think he's dead. Right. Uh, it's the play on like the Onion Knight, you know. Maybe this is like his new identity now. I don't know. He's okay. <laughs> he's stealing away to the middle of the night uh, before they kill him. Uh, okay, fine. Who else? Who is stealing? Uh, Jamie isn't stealing anything. Brienne isn't stealing anything. I don't think John's stealing anything. Danny's not stealing anything. Stannis. Except kingdoms. <laughs> well, yeah, but you could apply that definition of stealing to, like, most of these characters. Uh, I don't know. who is. Th- is this a new person? Can you tell me that? It is not a new person. Damn. Okay. Maybe. Okay. I'm just going to guess that it's Asha. Asha Greyjoy? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Because that's the place see? where we've had the weirdest we're gonna see names. her reaving. Last time we saw her, she had uh, appealed for the queen's moot and instead. lost. Right. And the dude, the reaver. Yeah. Maybe she'll be. Stealing something from her annoying uncle. Okay, cool. The next chapter is Jamie. Hey, Jamie. And we talked okay. about predictions for Jamie. So I, if you could just tell me what part of those predictions we'll be seeing in this chapter. and we We're going to see Brienne. And it's going to be fun. Okay, I thought they were going to see go, go, get to River Run and do that before seeing Brienne. It could be either direction. Either he okay. runs into her first, or and then they so go. So in the- this chapter, you're saying it's going to be her first. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, we have an email, but let's read it next time. Okay. So, in the meantime, send us more emails. We will read them. There's just sometimes you have time limits, and to follow the Instagram, join the Discord. Do the things. Talk to us. Talk to the void. Talk to the internet. 
I don't know. I'm losing my <laughs> losing my capacity. If you leave us a review, a screenshot, and send it to us. Yeah, because apparently now there's like a bazillion places you can also leave reviews. So I would have no idea which place to check. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Until next time. Farewell, my friends. Talk to you later. Thank you.